In daybreak, we carry on with our programming live right here on Citizen TV. My name is Wahiga Mwaura. Something interesting for you. Kenya's forest cover currently stands at 7.2% with the plan and the hope by the government to increase that to 10% by 2022. But a lot needs to be done to ensure that that becomes uh, and goes from becoming data on paper to a reality on the ground. And that's a discussion we want to have at this time. Even as I ask you, do you know what hashtag change the story means? Well, you'll be finding out shortly about this reforestation awareness campaign. And let me introduce my guests who will help us to learn a little bit more about this. On my immediate left is uh, Mr. John Gashora, the Group MD and CEO NIC Bank. Welcome to the program. Good morning, Mahiga. Good morning. And on my far left, we have Isao Omolo, the Senior Deputy Chief Conservator of Forests at the Kenya Forest Services. Welcome to the program as well. Thank you, Mahiga. The hashtag <coughs> for this discussion is Change the Story. Mr. Gashora, what, does change, what is Change the Story all about? This is its second edition. Why the need to start it last year? Let's start from there. Yes, uh, Change the Story was launched last year uh, with a number of partners, Royal Media Services being one of them, Junior Achievement, the Greenbeard Movement. Others have joined along the way. And the story was really simple. You know, when you looked at the media, with the newspapers, with the TV, the stories were either about drought, depending on which month you're looking at it, or about floods. And our feeling was actually all these were effects coming from destruction of the environment. And we're asking ourselves, what can we do to change the story so that what we see in the media is positive stories of the environment? Uh, basically, it was a movement to create consciousness among the Kenyan to create that consciousness that they can do something to change the stories that we see on TV. And the movement was aimed at driving Kenyans to plant trees. To change the story. What has been the impact since you the, the launch of the first edition since last year? We launched last year, which mm -hmm. was April last year, we um, last year was a good we had good rainfall. And working together with partners, we estimate we planted over six million trees. Um, the aim when we started the campaign across was the country. To plant across the country. Across the country, okay. The target was thirty million trees, and that remains a target for change the story campaign. Mm -hmm. I'm glad to say we have had a lot more partners come on board. And we believe, therefore, that target uh, will be met uh, presently. Presently. Yeah. Okay, I'll get more details about you shortly, but let me bring in Isa Omolo, of course, the Senior Deputy Chief Conservator of Forests at Kenya Forest Services. We know that ever since, I mean, by the time a government takes the drastic, dramatic step of putting a moratorium on, on, on logging, it means there's a serious issue. Since that happened, what has been the situation? Have you, as Kenya Forest Services, begun to feel that forests are beginning to reappear uh, or gain new life where previously there were concerns? Well, Wahiga, positively, it is very accurate that we at uh, Kenya Forest Service have noted that from the year 2002, Mm -hmm. we had approximately 5.6% forest cover. Now, as we talk today, we have about 7.2% forest cover. Okay. So there's a positive increase in our forest cover. But that doesn't make us be happy as a country. Because for a country to develop, we need approximately minimum of 10% forest cover. Now, that's why Kenyans, in setting out their constitution, gave ourselves a target of 10% forest cover. Earlier, we were supposed to reach the 10% forest cover by the year 2030. Mm -hmm. But because the government has prioritized the attainment of that 10% forest cover, now we must realize the 10% forest cover in the year 2022. Well, what that means is that each year, we'll have to plant approximately one point, uh, we have to plant approximately 600 million seedlings. And for the four years, for us to get the 10% forest cover, we need to plant about 1.8 billion seedlings. 1.8 billion, I can't, yes. wrapping your, our heads around that number, although Kenyans now are used to hearing a lot about billions, <laughs> so maybe they're, they're able to take, so what does that take? What's the cost of that? Well, this means, Waiga, that everybody in the country must take it upon themselves to be able to champion tree planting. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why Kenya Forest Service is reaching out to a widener partnership. This involves public sector, it involves private sector, and we are really happy to have the NIC Bank leading uh, the process in terms of partnership with KFS. Now this partnership is extended. For instance, with the public sector, we have the Greening Initiative, which is including virtually all government agencies to be able to undertake tree planting. Okay. So this task is bigger than Kenya Forest Service. It must embrace virtually everybody in the country to be able to attain 
the 10% forest cover, which uh, is our target. I'll be coming back to you to get your thoughts on what any Kenyan across the country who's watching this program can do, even if they cannot come to where sort of this mm. initiative is. How can they play their part? But uh, let me come mm. back to you. One of the initiatives that could support or could help in what he's calling for is um, adopting a forest. And I'm told that part of change the story we have seen, an adoption of, how, so how, how does that work? How do you adopt a forest? So uh, again, you, we, we have to work with Kenya Forest Services who are the basically, uh, I guess, the trustees for the forests that we have in the, in the country. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can give you an example. I think ourselves, we have adopted Kibiko Forest. And we worked last year with the Kenya Defense Forces to plant uh, over 70,000 trees in Kibiko Forest. And we continue, in fact, I think we have a tree planting event tomorrow there uh, to plant more trees. So you can choose which forest you want to adopt and working with, again, with Kenya Forest Services and the Ministry of uh, Environment and Forestry um, get to adopt uh, a forest. And that is something that can be done. But let me perhaps um, talk a little bit about the target that he mentioned about. I mean, the 1.8 billion trees is a very, very heavy target. The president has talked about it. He talked about it, in fact, uh, on Mandaraka Day. But if you heard him, he also asked every Kenya to go out and plant a tree. We estimate, and we were talking about it earlier with the South, that if every Kenyan, out of 45 million, mm -hmm. if you say for every Kenyan we plant 10 trees, yeah, that is 450 million trees a year. That is getting very close to the 600 million trees that we need to plant a year. And so what we need to encourage people, what we encourage organizations to do, individuals to do, is to go out and plant trees. And on that, I, I must really thank Raw Media Services through your various TV, um, or Citizen TV, plus your various radio stations, both in vernacular, English, and Swahili. You've actually gone out and spread this message out there because the idea of creating consciousness mm -hmm. is to say that this target cannot be met by government alone doesn't matter how many government agencies you bring together. What it means is that every individual must look at their little plot of land and perhaps set aside a quarter of it okay. and plant trees. And the rest, if they can, they can also plant uh, fruit trees, avocados and others. Those are trees. And that will aid in this forestation drive. Okay. Isao, let me, coming back to you, there is a danger sometimes when uh, big companies take up campaigns that people at home feel like, those ones are doing it, yes. they can do it, they have the reach and so forth, why don't we leave it to them? How do you get the ordinary Kenyan, and, and he's started the discussion actually, but you can wait, to also buy into this, to also play their role wherever they are? That's why I think the reality which we must face in this country is that uh, the biggest uh, people who will benefit from a good forestry program could be most likely our kids. The next generation. And yes, the next generation. Mm -hmm. And the best way as a country where we, we need to start is to start from our schools and be able to introduce environmental consciousness, environmental curriculums through our schools. And already as a service, we have started the Greening Schools Initiative, where we are involving all the students who are in the country to be able to learn and to be able to practice tree planting. But the general public, for the general public which is out there to understand that, that forestry is very critical for their life, we must now improve on our awareness campaign. And our awareness campaign will be revolving around how we interact with forestry on a routine basis. Everybody who is out there in a daily basis is depending on a lot of forestry products. Mm -hmm. We also as a country must begin to realize that our agricultural sector, which is supporting this country's economy, depends very heavily on the good health of our forest cover. And most of our people who are out there planting and growing crops must now learn that there's a direct relationship between good crop farming and good forestry. Okay. In some places, particularly in the small farms, we even now would encourage story farming, where you mix fruit trees with your crops, so that if it is dry, then you don't lose out completely from at least getting some product. Okay. So, for the public, I think our livelihood revolves around good forestry practice, and that we must be able to promote. So no one can say that they are far removed from it, that, that, that whatever happens to the forests won't affect them. Nobody can say that, in your view. Yes, yes, the reality, and, and this is informed by fairly very close assessment, is that everybody's livelihood on a routine basis revolves around the protection of natural resources. Okay. Be it forest, be it wildlife, 
But then for the Kenyan scenario, which we have now, because we are an agricultural country, most of our agricultural systems are supported by forestry. And if all of us now do appreciate that our forests are also our vital catchments for water, and there's no any day when a Kenyan is not going to use water. Okay. And good water always comes from the forest okay. because the forest filters the water and keeps it available even during dry conditions. All right. I'm looking right. for a one-line answer from you on this. Mm. The ban on logging, is mm. it working? Despite mm. complaints by some that they've lost their revenue, their income and so forth. Yes. How would you respond to yes. that briefly? Yes. Let me state that the ban on logging is targeting only public and community forests. That we do not do any logging in public and community forests. So it's opening doors for people who have got private farms to also invest in forestry because forestry is a commercial activity. But at the moment in the country, the ban of logging is working. It's working because now things like excessive charcoal production is not affecting our forest. Also excessive exploitation, which was reminiscent of logging, is now reduced to a minimum. Okay. Thereafter, we will now have to plan effectively to ensure that any future logging in public forest is done very systematically. Okay, thank you for that. Mm. Bwana Gashora, you have the last word on this discussion. Uh, you've heard what he's had to say about yes. inculcating a culture of yes. appreciating forests by younger generation. Mm. What more would you like to add on that? How do you get Kenyans, one by one, whatever they are watching this program, mm. to get more involved? One is with what we're doing together with raw media services and other patterns. As I said, it should be a message of creating consciousness about the effects of deforestation and what each person, what role each person can play through, these, um, uh, through tree planting. But there, there was something else I mentioned somewhere else earlier, which is that uh, in Philippines, for example, they have uh, made it a law that for a child to graduate from secondary school, they must show that they are planted 10 trees. Oh. Now, something like that, as we work on a curriculum, on a new curriculum, something like that would be something we should consider. Uh, when I was young and they introduced the 844 system, you know, to graduate, you must have carved a, a comb, a wood <laughs> comb, if you remember those days, for those of us who were, uh, who were in school then. That was woodwork, and we all did it everywhere, whether in the city, where in the villages, doesn't matter where you were, you had to do it. Now, if we introduced into our curriculum the mm -hmm. need for you to plant 10 trees before you can get your certificate of graduation from high school, that would change the story. And so that's one way to look at it. Yes. Gentlemen, thank you so much for, for joining us this morning to have this discussion. The hashtag is Change the Story. You can engage on that on social media. Remember, you can get more information on uh, you know, raw media platforms, on social media, radio and TV as well. And of course, also find out what's happening on the uh, NIC website, I believe, should have some information on the same. But that has been Mr. Isa Omolo, the Senior Deputy Chief Conservator of Forest, Kenya Forest Services. Thank you so much for, for, for this discussion, of course. And we'll have you back on for more on this, even as uh, you know, Matters Forest is something that we must keep monitoring and Mr. John Gashora, the group MD and CEO NIC Bank. Well, that's how we wrap up this discussion. This has been Daybreak for today. Thank you for joining us uh, for the program from 6 a.m. till now. On behalf of myself, Zinzi Kibiku, and the whole team that makes this program possible, thank you for having tuned in, but don't go anywhere. Semana Citizen is coming up next. Stay tuned.